Matthew chapter 16, the Gospel of Father say Matthew chapter 16, very familiar passage. Verse 17 and 18. All right, all right. Verse 16, 17, and 18. And I won't be before you long. Dr. M. L. Jackson had a lot of preachers that he taught us. Take the time that you give them. He taught us if you don't have it seven minutes, use that. Amen. Matthew 16, beginning at verse 16, and Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I just want to talk about God's church is marching on. God's church is marching on. Even in this time of pandemic, when they want you to limit the number of people in your building his church is marching on and I'm talking about God's church now now, uh, I, I, as I was preparing this message I heard uh, Dr. Gamel say something whatever it is of man will come to naught but if it be of God can't nobody and nothing stop. And God's church, though it has been through battle after battle, is still marching on. This is a most important confession that was made in the word of God. Because Jesus is in conversation with his disciples. He does an interesting thing because he says, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And you know, they had some pretty, a lot of them had some pretty terrible things to say about it. And those who said good things still didn't know the full truth. They called him Elijah or Jeremiah, one of the other prophets. Uh, they said he was a good man, but they they, they didn't know, and of course, uh, when he asked that question, everybody answered, but then he said, who do you say that, that I am? Now, you, you are with me. Uh, I don't want to hear what they say. And, and one of these days, people will learn to stop listening to what they say. A amen. Because they say a lot of times is that person saying to you. Uh, because they feel the way whoever they say really is. And so, so of course, uh, people are ashamed to praise God. They're ashamed to worship. They're afraid to worship because of what they say. Uh, but Jesus, and he really wasn't concerned about what they say. He was leading to the second question. Who do you say that, that I am? Since you have had a chance to see me close up and walk with me close up. What do you, I don't want to hear what they say at this point. What do you say? That's a very important question to every believer even now. What do you have to say about who Jesus really is? And Simon Peter answered, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, Jesus says, to him, Peter, you ain't got enough sense to know what you just confessed. You, you're not smart enough to know uh, that who I am, except you get some divine help. He said, flesh and blood 
have not revealed this unto you but my father. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and what he says is, you're right. Your, your confession is, is right. And, and, and thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church. Now I want you to catch what Jesus does because the reason God's church can march on is number one, Christ is the center of the church. Yeah, he, he, He's the center of, of, of the church. And, and when, when he says uh, that thou art or Peter, and upon this rock, uh, I will build my church. L let me tell you, the church, he calls it, basically, uh, it comes from a verb, uh, literally meaning called out from. And the church then is the called out one. Right. Right. It is a body of baptized believers in Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. It is Jesus' community of believers, the church. He says, upon this rock, I will build a body or a community of believers. Yeah. And at the time he says that, the Roman government is in authority, but now, as you know, his church has grown, and the Romans' uh, power sits in the pages of history. Yeah. Uh, because they tried to stop his church, but they could not stop what God had ordained. You, you, you got to know that everybody who's in the church, that they, they are joined into this church by faith in Jesus Christ. For by grace are you saved through faith. So if you want to be a member of the church or the body, you've got to have faith in the Son. The second person of the Godhead. He says, look, uh, upon this rock, I'm going to build something that time cannot destroy. I'm going to build something that the Roman government cannot stop. And it does not make any difference because he, puts the, he put the church in the world to point others to Jesus Christ because he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So when people start thinking the church is for everything else, you need to remember the church has one purpose. It's to point me in the, to Jesus Christ. And, and, and I need to tell you, when he places himself there, he places himself at the center of the church. Anything you build and it's not centered around Jesus Christ, it ain't nothing. I have a kind of witness. It, 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 it's something that's worthless and empty and, and vain. He says, upon this rock, I will build my church. I will build my community of believers. And can you imagine how his church has grown across centuries? This church, Jesus Christ, is the center of. Any church he's the center of. It keeps on marching. Now, you got to catch this. He said, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I build my church. But now, he ain't building this church on Peter. <laughs> Y'all catch that. He, he was saying, Peter, thou art the Petros, which is a small rock. But, but I'm building the church on the Petros which is a large rock foundation. I'm building it on your confession, but I'm building it more so on me because Jesus is uh, the chief cornerstone. Yeah. Oh, oh yes, oh yes. Peter himself had to say that Jesus is the one that the church is built on. In, in chapter 4 of Acts, he says, you are the stone that the builders rejected, but God has made him the chief cornerstone. Paul named Jesus Christ as the rock that the church is built on. 1 Corinthians 10 and 4, he calls Christ the head of the church. That means he is the one who's in the center of the church. But not only does he place himself at the center of the church, he places himself as the owner of the church. Because he says, my church. 
it's a whole lot of folks, they, they really get a little mixed up because some folks start thinking the church belongs to them. I knew it was going to get quiet right there. So, so, some folk think because I've had a long tenure at the church, I, I got certain rights that nobody else has. But Jesus said, hold up, it ain't your church, it's mine. That's why people got to stop being so arrogant as to say what's going on and what's not going to go on in the church because it ain't your church. It's, it's God's church. And some folks live longer I'm living, that this won't happen, and that won't happen, and this won't happen, and that won't happen. And a whole lot of them that said that they dead and the church is still marching up. <laughs> I don't gotta win this. Because he is the owner of the church. He takes him his place as the center and as the owner of the church or his community of followers. And, and he would be their means of entrance into that community. And that's why he said, no man coming to the Father but by me. Because it is his church. But then, you got to remember this. If we are his church, then he is the one that we ought to follow. We're somewhere out. we got to stop following our own rules and, and, and our own what I want and what I don't want and follow what the Lord says. And I'm telling you, during this time of pandemic, I, I tell you what God is doing. He's giving the church a chance to reset yeah. all the stuff that, that we threw in the church. He said, let me shut the door. All, all, all the stuff that we want in there, but he don't want in there. He said, let me shut the door. Uh, uh, to the facilities, y'all understand what I'm saying? He, he said, look, the, the church needs a reset. That's why when judgment starts, he says it's going to begin in the house. Because he said, it's my house. My church. And, and y'all got to remember, we need to follow him. Stop following ideas and stop following what, what people say. What does God say in his word? A whole lot of folks say, look, I've been in church 30, 40 years. I know this and I know that. Let me tell you something. If you ain't got sitting up to know by now a whole lot of stuff you thought you knew you don't know, then you ain't been learning very much. Because God's word and ways are so deep, you'll never fully understand everything about what God does and what he says. And so whenever God does a new thing, you just need to roll with whatever God's doing. Because we ought to follow him. If we follow him, that means his name, his character, his person yeah. and his principles yeah. ought to be represented by us. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so somebody need to hear that again. So, some, some of y'all remember when, when you used to go places, mom and them used to tell you, look now, wherever you go, remember, you represent me because you wear my name. And, and, and the church must remember that, that as you go, you need to remember whose name you represent. If your name is Jesus, he had a name above every name. And at his name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. You, you got to remember you carry his name. Ain't nothing about this about you and your name. Because how many of y'all know that your name don't mean much of nothing if Jesus ain't in it? He, he's the reason why we are who we are. If we have made anything out of ourselves, it's because of his name and not ours. That's why if God has blessed you to make it through this virus and through the things you have been through, you ought to give all praise to our God, our Savior. We ought to give all praise to Jesus Christ because you know you couldn't have made it by yourself. You know it had to have been the Lord on your 
aside because you've encountered some storms, some troubles, you've encountered some worries and some crying in this life that you couldn't handle if it wasn't for the Lord. You gotta remember it. You represent his name. But then you represent his character. The character, the mental and moral quality of individual. And so you all exemplify God's character in whatever you say and do. In other words, people ought to be able to see Jesus in you. And the things you say and the things you do. Now, now if he can't be seen in what you say and what you do, then maybe you're doing something you ain't got no business. witness. You've got to remember you ought to have his character. Gentleness, meekness, love. you got to have the fruits of the spirit. You, you, you ought to show the world that I'm not what I used to be. God has made a change in my life. Matter of fact, the more you walk with him, the more you ought to act like him. got a, a witness when when you've been born again uh, it ought to be something about you that's like your father <laughs> got a witness in other words uh, yes there ought to be a walk like his there ought to be a talk like his when they see you they ought to see him and if you walk around cussing and drinking and smoking, that is not representative of the one whose name you carry. <laughs> uh, 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 I got a witness. You got to remember that you ought to represent the character of Jesus. But then you ought to represent the principles of Jesus. That's a foundational truth that serves as a foundation for a system of a belief. And your principles ought to come from the word of God. I have my God witness. In other words, we live by kingdom principles. I know what the world says, but there's some principles in this book that does not make sense to the world. Such as, uh, uh, yes, I'll open the windows of heaven. Uh, if you just bring me 10% of what I give you. A principle such as, uh, you'll receive 100 fold in this life. Uh, and in the life to come, uh, everlasting life. Uh, whatever you give up for the sake of Jesus Christ. There are some divine principles. If they slap you on one cheek. Turn the other cheek. That's divine principles. Love those that hate you and do good to those that mistreat you. That is divine principles. And those of us uh, who are of the household of faith, we got to remember we must represent the character of Jesus Christ. But then lastly, Jesus uh, is uh, the champion uh, of the church. Have I got a witness? Uh, because he said, upon this rock, uh, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell uh, shall not prevail against my church. Well, uh, when you see the gates of hell, uh, the gates of a city is a symbol of that city's strength. And Jesus says, uh, the gates of heaven shall not prevail against my church. In other words, uh, the church uh, is unstoppable. He says, Satan uh, cannot corral it. Uh, his power uh, cannot overthrow it. Uh, Satan uh, cannot silence it. Uh, and not even the power of death. It, uh, because the church goes on uh, even when members uh, who have been faithful to the Lord uh, have to leave here in death. Uh, the doors uh, of the facilities uh, may be closed, uh, but the door of the church uh, is still.